Okay, so my name is Neil Roberts. I'm a therapeutic radiographer, and this uh, resource is to go alongside the uh, introduction to radiotherapy PowerPoint that you'll receive on your VLE site. Um, we have the um, advantage of being able to simulate what a clinical placement would be like. I know you're not having clinical placements at this time, but the uh, virtual simulation um, software that we that I can show you uh, today will give you an idea and appreciation of the radiotherapy treatment process. So um, on the screen uh, in front of you, you can see a radiotherapy uh, linear accelerator machine. So this is housed in a treatment bunker. Um, you would have been told that radiotherapy treatment is a specialised service, so there are not uh, that many radiotherapy centres in the country. I think we're talking just over 60. And the reason, one of the reasons being that they are expensive to kit out and to protect both staff, the public and patients uh, with. So the example that I'm showing you here is um, a linear accelerator bunker and you can see the walls here that house the machinery are all uh, reinforced with either a mixture of well, either lead, concrete or a mixture of both um, to prevent radiation exposure uh, and escaping from the room. Now, this the Leeds Cancer Centre has 12 linear accelerators and it's a regional centre serving the Yorkshire population of about two and a half million. Um, and so the centres are busy treating around 40 patients a day, give or take. Um, and it's an outpatient treatment, obviously. So we need to make sure that facilitating radiotherapy is um, as straightforward as it can be. But obviously with that, as you can see from the patient mocked up on our treatment couch here, the treatment can be intimidating and uh, alarming for certain patients. The machine, machinery itself is quite daunting, it's a large machinery, large machine and from your training and your, and your introduction to radiotherapy um, PowerPoint, you will know that a lot of the uh, machinery is actually behind this gantry fascia that houses um, the equipment to generate uh, the power and the energy for the, for the radiation treatments that comes out here on our gantry. So there's a lot of work going on behind the screen, but out in the room itself, um, the patient has to be on their own during treatment. And often, um, if we're treating areas um, that are prone to movement on the patient, so such as the head and neck, the patients need to be immobilised as well. And I'll just show you an example of what an immobilisation device will look like on this particular patient. So you can see there that there would be, I know it's not positioned well, but there would be in a face mask. Um, which minimises patient movement involuntary or otherwise and allows us to direct our radiation beam accurately. In addition to this, to ensure the accuracy of radiotherapy, uh, patients have images taken uh, at the time of treatment to verify the accuracy. And so what we can also do is just show you what that would feel like or look like for a patient once I get the, uh, that's the right one. And so it can be a quite a confining treatment and the image, this is the, uh, the image receiver, the intensifier, and also patients will have different types of imaging. So they'll have mega voltage imaging and also kilovoltage imaging, which, which means another panel coming out around them as it moves around their body quite, um, quite close, quite close to proximity. So all these aspects of treatment sometimes mean that radiotherapy can involve um, support services, play specialists, paediatrics, um, Macmillan support staff to help with patients who have claustrophobia and other uh, issues managing and coping with the treatment. So this particular patient we've got in front of us, um, we are dealing with a head and neck cancer. Let me just move this out of the way. And you'll notice in the room itself that there are lasers that are projecting from the walls onto the patient, which gives us uh, our position for treatment can be called an isocenter, so a point in space which denotes the, uh, the maximum point of dose that we're, that we're trying to set the patient up to. Um, and the, the lasers converge on the, the point of patient where we're wanting to treat them. Um, and so we talked about accuracy of radiotherapy, we're talking here millimetres uh, in terms of how accurate we need to be throughout this, their treatment course. And some patients have, mul well, many patients have multiple treatments. Um, over 20 daily treatments, so we need to make sure this treatment is uh, really accurate. And 
you can see here on this patient that they will have had a CT scan to start the whole process off and the clinician will review the CT scan for the slices and actually delineate the areas for treatment. So we've got on this patient our tumour um, and a volume around the tumour to allow for um, movement of the patient and, and inaccuracy. And we've also got the uh, organs at risk, the, thing with the, the organs uh, that we don't want to receive dose. So we can see here a cord and we can see Oops, we turn the patient around the parotid glands on this patient Oops. on either side uh, and the mandible around the tumour and the art of radiotherapy is ensuring minimal dose to these structures whilst maximal dose to the tumour volume and so we can see this uh, dose painting illustrates this nicely for us with a nice uh, orangey red colour um, signifying the dose to the tumour or the uh, planning target volume and minimal dose to these um, uh, normal structures and so the clinician will go through each slice of the CT scan throughout the volume to accomplish this. In terms of the treatment itself, the treatment as you would have been told is directed from the head of the radiotherapy machine um, and we have different types of treatment that we can deliver um, the newest innovation being volumetric arc therapy where this machine, the gantry, moves around the patient continuously and actually modulates the intensity of the radiation dose to different parts of the patient and that uh, obviously allows us to achieve these dose parameters that I've just described around the organs at risk and the tumour volume. So we'll show you what it looks like in real time now. And so you will have noticed in terms of timing for these uh, beams of delivery, um, it's fairly quick um, and treatment times can range from anywhere between 10 minutes and as much as 25 minutes every day. So um, being able to set the patient up in this position on this tabletop aligned to these lasers is often the most um, challenging aspect of the treatment appointment for the patient. Uh, the treatment delivery can often be completed in minutes, uh, even uh, less than minutes. And so hopefully this gives you an appreciation of the treatment process. Um, you will realise there's differences depending on the types of cancer and the site for treatment. Um, but it just goes, gives you an idea in lieu of the clinical placement as to the type of challenges that are presented and what the treatment um, appointment will actually uh, feel like for the patient. So I hope this helps, thank you.